Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our water recycler that we developed at Vactor. Now, as you guys know, we live in the Northwest. Water is usually pretty plentiful, but on a drought year like we had last year, uh, water becomes pretty precious and it doesn't take too long to start to realize how precious it is. So we've been studying and, uh, and developing a water recycler for quite some time. We actually came out with our first model in the 80s. Uh, it, it worked until you had to go inside the body and clean out those screens one time and then you, you never wanted to go back in there again and do that. Uh, so we, we realized real early on that operator interface had to be minimized. We wanted to keep operators from having to get in here and clean this stuff out. So we developed the self-cleaning system and it automates and cleans itself. And I'll talk to you a little bit about that as we go through the system. Now the vector portion itself is not significantly different. This one's set up with a positive displacement blower on the machine. And if you look at the side of the debris body, there's a couple of additional sensors on the side of the body just to let the operators know when they have enough water in the body to recycle or when they're starting to get to have too much water in the body and it's time to let the recycler uh, deplete some of that. We also have sensors on the gray water tank, which is on the right-hand side of the machine. It's made out of stainless steel. And that'll also warn the, uh, the operator if the gray water is getting low or if they're starting to recycle faster than they're consuming it, it'll just help them to slow down and not, uh, not spill the gray water onto, onto the ground. So the concept is the body is the first uh, method of separation for the debris that comes in. You get the big floaties that are on top, you get the solids that settle to the bottom, and our sweet spot is in the middle of that, of that liquid that we want to pull out. We take it through a perforated screen at the real, rear door so it, particle sizes that are larger than the perforation stay in the body, and the lower, uh, smaller components come through along with the liquid. And that's going to come into a, a positive displacement water pump. The importance of that is it's positive displacement, so it's always putting out the same flow regardless of the back pressure of my water recycling system. If it was just fixed displacement, that pressure would change and it would, it would pump less water through. So we chose to use a positive displacement water pump on the, on the machine. It sends that water into a cyclonic separator that spins the solids to the exterior and it constantly flushes those solids back into the body through these valves. All right, from that point, the water goes through a classification filter, which is a steel ring that's got literally millions of 100 micron perforations in it. So we limit any debris larger than 100 microns from going beyond that point. It's essentially a, a press filter, a classification filter. That system is also self-purged, so occasionally it comes offline, and the vacuum system on the body helps clear its throat and pull that debris off of the si surface of the classification filter back into the debris body. From here, it goes into the gray water system, which is the stainless steel tank on the right-hand side, and you're ready to consume it with the, uh, with the jetting system. Our system will allow you to jet continuously at 80 GPM, so we're re recycling at a rate of 80 plus GPM all the time. Obviously, if you need to use a 100 GPM system, you'd have to periodically come offline, but it will keep up with you all day long at 80 GPM. Self-purges, like I said, so the debris, the solids continue to flush back into the body and it allows the operator to keep on working up front. One of the things that we, uh, we realized real quickly is the mode of operation changes a little bit when we use this truck. Traditionally, if I'm gonna go out and clean lines, I'm gonna leave the shop full of water and I'm gonna have nothing in my debris body. When I'm using recycled water, the concept is I don't have to have water in, clean water in my recycled tank. I can just suck up some gray water either from my headworks at the treatment plant or go to a high flow line and vacuum in a bunch of liquids until my body is about half full. At that point I can start recycling and I'm going to recycle all day long. I can recycle for days. All right. Eventually I'm going to fill up with some solids and I'll have to go dump it. But the reality is while I'm recycling the stuff, I don't have to go back and replenish with any fresh water. I've got the recycled water that I'm consuming. And at the end of my work, I've got a tank that's nearly full of recycled water that I'm going to go and jet a couple of additional lines that I don't recycle while I'm jetting them. So it changes a little bit of my mindset of my typical day's work. Instead of today, when you finish at the line, you're out of water, 
and you got a bunch of liquid in your body that you have to go take care of. All right. The consistency of the liquid in the body is going to be much drier than your typical day when you go dump um, whatever solids you've been vacuuming up. It dumps out much more like a burrito. All right. It still doesn't require a vibrator because there's quite a bit of liquid still in there, but it does come out in a fairly, uh, fairly consistent um, form, almost uh, a little bit like some, uh, uh, some soup. But uh, that's the basics of our water recycler. If anybody got any questions? Filter changing, this stuff is all automated, it cleans itself. You can see though on all of the elbows, we do have drains. Daily you get sediment that's going to come in here, so at the end of the day you're just going to open those up. You can flush fresh water through here and it'll clean itself out. We bypass the Y strainer on our water recycler system because there'll be organics that are in that water and we certainly don't want to put that through the Y strainer. We only go through the Y strainer when we're using fresh water on the truck. If you guys look at the controls on the front of the machine, you'll notice that you have the choice of using just recycled water when you're jetting, a combination of fresh water and recycled water, or you can just use fresh water if you choose to do so. And that's just a selection of a, of a switch at the front. So when we use the Y strainer, it's only when we're using the fresh water. You'll also notice if you look at the water pump on the right hand side, there's some, uh, a little bit of differences as, as you look at it. There's a lot more differences inside. We took a lot of technology and, uh, and worked with the check valves. The check valves are much more um, tolerant today of small grits and a little bit of impurities in the water to keep them from sticking open. Uh, one of the things that was key to our development of this was the size of that 100 micron classification filter. Uh, the technology tells us that particles larger than 100 micron are much more abrasive and much more destructive to nozzle tips and to uh, scouring of the water pumps. So we keep those, uh, that debris smaller than 100 microns. That's a much more silty fine material and much less abrasive as it goes through the system. Good question, Aubrey. Thanks. Any other questions? What's the gallons of the fresh water? The machine itself will hold 1,500 gallons of water on board. The recycle tank is 500 gallons, so you have 1,000 gallons um, potential of fresh water on the system. It'll be achieved with this left-hand top tank, the smaller uh, lower tank on the left-hand side, and they typically will have a belly tank underneath the body. Other questions? Same amount of debris. This one's got a 15-yard body, so you can fill these up. You can get a lot of debris in there. The interesting thing is as you're recycling, you're putting more and more solids in the body, less liquid. But the weight change is almost the same as I get rid of water through the recycling process and I put extra solids in there. It's not much heavier than the liquid water is all by itself. This mechanism is 800 pounds in the rear door. We put a pusher axle on this particular truck specifically for Washington because you guys are very um, much more weight constrained than most of our other places in the country. So we do recognize that and that's why we've got a pusher axle on this to give you some load carrying capacity on the machine. If you really wanted to go big, you could still put a tag axle on the back side of it as well. Any other questions? One of the other things we recognized really quickly was the productivity improvement of this truck. Without having to go and refill with water every time you deplete your fresh water on board, you save a bunch of time. Contractors like this because time is money obviously for them and they're typically paid by how long to get that job done. So they don't have to leave the job site with their money maker, go fill it with fresh water or tend water to that truck. On the municipal side, it also saves a bunch of time. Everybody's got those hard to get to places that don't have hydrants available to you. Or if there are hydrants in the area, you're not allowed to use them because of the infrastructure. All right, this stops you from having to go break the truck down, set up traffic control, refill, go back up there. It literally doubles your productivity 
without doubling your crew or doubling doubling the number of trucks that you have. We've we uh, we first got in the market two years ago and we seeded the market at our contractor level with three trucks because we wanted to make sure that they were going to run and run effectively. So we ran those three trucks in San Antonio, Texas, in uh, uh, Southern California, uh, San Diego, and another one was in uh, Quebec, Canada. So we ran those a long time. We got one of them back and actually disassembled all the wear components just to see how well they held up, did a great job. And since February of this year, we've been selling them into the marketplace. So far, we've got six other machines that are out there and in use today.